hello everyone in this video we will this is uh, i think uh, part 9 of uh, uh, my video tutorial series and in this video tutorial i will continue the grid view series tutorial uh, last time we st and you can see i have taken a liberty of clearing all the other controls which we have learned in previous video because videos because it was clustering up the codes you know so now we only i only have allowed grid tutorial which is i think part 8 of the tutorial video series uh, let's continue when i click the button the data loads into the data grid which we have blend into the previous series now let's continue but the thing is we can't uh, edit the data if we probably 1800 we type type triple nine but we can't say because we haven't made save data we load again and it's loads the default again so now we will uh, say learn how to save the data which we we can edit in the grid view uh, and one problem you will see is uh, the way we have learned is uh, we see the code what we do is we select all data from the database and then we uh, in the last video we loop data row by row into our grid view so this way if we make changes to let's say uh, multiple areas and try to save that we have to do multiple loops into the database so the data gets saved eh? it will get quite complicated if we do that so there is a much much simpler way we will do like that first we go into the code for the data grid and for this tutorial we will uh, remove uh, this uh, loop and all this row area and we will uh, do something new see uh, up to here uh, our data table gets filled with the data using our SQL query from our database so now what we will do is just bind our grid view to this data table to do that we type data grid view one dot data source data source equals uh, d table i think like that let's see if it works eh? you can see it works only the column name is directly f the field names of our database but uh, you can see we we got rid of quite a bit of codes the the reason i i did i thought uh, that uh, to look for looping and extra codes in the last video tutorial series to give you another way of doing the same thing which was pretty hard but actually the main purpose was to give us idea what is actually going behind the scene uh, this way we, we don't know but now we know because we have done a pre previous tutorial series so it's very simple now only thing we have to do is make a save button for data grid uh, put a button here size is something like that uh, we name it uh, btn save grid and text would be save grid all right and for this we will copy all the code from our previous video previous button sorry paste it here and only thing we will do we will do in this uh, save grid button is uh, we will just uh, uh, basically update the data table eh? because the data table is directly uh, binded to our data source uh, to our grid eh? okay to do that we don't need to actually declare our data table once again because uh, once we click the load button uh, the data table will be loaded and it will be binded 
to our grid view the user will make changes using grid view to the binded data table and then we, we just need to update the data table instead of creating another variable for that and loading data once again eh? so we so we remove the declaration from here and make the declaration of the data table a global one eh? so uh, to do that uh, so it's only need to declare one we have to cut the code from here and uh, paste it uh, on top of here eh? before form one, form one declaration now the, this declaration is global this is one data table and it it acts against uh, all button value eh? now here we don't have to uh, bind uh, data table to grid view again I guess no no uh, what we get rid of uh, this line of code is it yes so we don't have to bind again no clear column code and data table dot fill because it's already filled we do data data dot update okay the code seems right so it basically should uh, make a connection open a connection select all yes from the table uh, select all and then oh wait and basically yes uh, updates just make some less space here so it select all from the data table and then just instead of filling the d table because it is already filled when we when we press the load button it just updates let's see if it works eh? uh, we make load read and we change something over here and save and it gets and we get an error it says uh, oh it says update requires a update command basically we need a insert into or uh, probably a set values the edit command will end area but uh, good thing uh, we have a built-in tool which is called OLEDB command builder which can generate all the insert update extra command we needed uh, with that adapter so we will use that so we don't have to types uh, a long sql manually here so to, to do that we type OLE db command builder name it like uh, builder equals new builder and it's a method now this command builder will work on data adapter D E A D A. oops data adapter or data table uh, data adapter I guess so I will just copy this data adapter and paste it uh, here okay so now it says uh, when I do a data adapter dot update it will take all the changes on data table we have just made because it is binded to our data grid and try to update data adapter which will then update the database but data adapter will need lot of SQL commands to update uh, the database which will be generated automatically by command builder on data adapter okay let's try so we run we load the grid and the grid is pointed to our data table so we make uh, changes for example we put here 111 and then for Jane we put uh, we make two changes okay and now when we click save this data table should get updated by using data update update method and all the sql command required will be generated 
behind the scenes by command builder on the data adapter so we click save we don't get any errors uh, the changes we made did this and this we close and if we run the program again and load the grid and see both errors have been reflected thank you uh, so that's it for this video tutorial how to update uh, data from data grid to our database we will continue on next video tutorial thank you